Hello everyone, this is Roxas1359, and welcome back to Let's Play Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly. Last time we began our bare bones plot and our mission, go and save as many baby dragonflies as we can. In this episode, we're going to be tackling the first level of the game, the Dragonfly Dojo. And, spoiler alert, we're not going to be finishing the Dragonfly Dojo because of two specific reasons. One of which is because we technically can't get everything in this level yet, and this is the only level in the game in which that applies. Second, there's a glitch that happens. But, either way, we have the familiar transition screens of, you know, masking a loading screen, just spinning a still image in the background. But, look who it is! Oh, no, Spyro! It looks like the Riptox have frozen all the Dragon Masters. You're going to have to use your flame breath to melt the ice and find out what happened here. Oh, great! So I got to free dragons again. Didn't I have to do this inside the first Spyro of the Dragon game? But yes, welcome to the Dragon Dojo, the first of the levels in the game, with our first encounter with the Riptox. Who are the Riptox? Don't worry, there's going to be a cutscene halfway through the game that explains about what the Riptox are, when in reality, it probably should have been played before we ended up going to our first level. Now, one thing that's really, really annoying about this game, that this level, and especially the next level, very much show. The levels are too expansive. And I mean too expansive. But first, let's catch our first dragonfly. Hey, it's Steffi. I'm sorry? I thought we were going for regular lit names, you know, like how the dragons had in Spyro 3. I guess not. But yes, the levels in this game are way too expansive for their own good. And while this one isn't as bad, the second level in the game is absolutely horrendous with it. And part of me is thinking, okay, something's telling me they decided, let's make the levels as big and sprawling as we can, because Generation 6 Hardware! Which, in the end, all it ended up doing is just succeeded in giving me a headache, which I'm already getting because of this choppy frame rate. Wow, that is a new record for me. Normally, I end up getting the headache later on. Now, one thing about the gems that I didn't explain about in the last episode. The gem colors are basically the same as they were from previous Spyro games, except for one difference, and I think this might have been a glitch or something that they did an oversight on. Gold gems have two values in this game. What do I mean by that? In the past, there was a lightish pink gem that was worth 25. That's been the case ever since the first Spyro the Dragon game, and though they were rare, they were inside all of the classic series. Well, in this game, gold gems are worth 25, but also in certain occasions, they are worth 10. So something's telling me that they forgot to program in the actual pinkish gem because all the gems pretty much except for the red gems have the same model and nope oh, I fell that's first death so first death hype so pretty much a lot of the time you're gonna be seeing 25 when I grab a gold gem and for a lot of Spyro fans that'll seem kind of confusing believe me it it is pretty much confusing Luckily, though, the game decides to save when you do that, so I think, uh, let's free the dragon. Ah, Spyro, thank goodness you had the sense to free me from that icy cage. Who would have thought the Riptox would dare invade the sacred Dragonfly Dojo? Spyro, do what you can to return the Dojo to its peaceful state by freeing all of the Dragon Masters. Remember, Spyro, the way of the dragon is to be a dragon. Okay, that's a very bad Chinese accent, I'm not gonna lie. And hit, what was his name? Bruce? Hold on. We talked to Miyagi before we came here, and we had Bruce. Oh god, it's very obvious to see what they're doing here. Yay. Isn't that just glorious? But, let's go over this way to our newly opened area. Kill this Riptock. Which plays sound effects from Spyro 3. You're going to be noticing this game uses a lot of assets from past Spyro games, uh, including a full-on model from the second game. So, look, I passed that gem. Spark should have picked that up for me. What the heck? It's at this point I'm realizing, okay, Sparks is going to be useless. So, 
where's the move in which I can end up getting all of the gems at once? And Sparks will point it out. It's in this game, but we don't have it yet. Why is that? I'll explain after we get a little tutorial from Sparks about this enemy. Well, that's actually kind of rude, Sparks. How do you know he looks pretty dumb? I mean, he just looks like he's training and possibly trying to take off like a helicopter. He saw how Hunter was in the last episode. No! I would assume anything would really not survive being above 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Seeing as how, you know, I'm cooking a pizza in the oven right now, and that's barely at 400. I know I wouldn't survive 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yes, we have the return of enemies that pretty much you have to flame, or in this case, use your other breaths that aren't bubble, in order to take down. Well, there's a glitch with those guys, and it has to deal with the sound effect they play when they're spinning their little canes. For some odd reason in this game, certain sound effects don't cut off when they're supposed to, and they'll end up, you know keep on spinning and playing the sound effect even when they're long dead which is annoying and here's the tutorial saying hey look when a fairy zaps you that means it's a quick save just like always now as I was talking before about the ability to track other gems in Spyro 2 it was actually an innate ability and then in Spyro 3 they took it away and put it behind a little sparks mini game to unlock well, in this game, you have to actually beat Ripto in order to unlock it. And that kind of sucks. Well, guess what? Unfortunately, in this case, you're never told when you can fight Ripto. Pretty much, I believe you need 50 dragonflies in order to do it. You're given no clue that you can fight Ripto. That you can go back to the portal and that you can fight Ripto. You're given no clue whatsoever at all. So I go through this entire game without that ability, which honestly leads to me being in these levels a little bit longer than normal, but I'll do some editing later on. But look, it's our first dragon rune that was scattered around the dragon realms of the one homeworld that is inside this game. So what is the breath we just unlocked once we take that rune back? It's going to be the lightning breath, which is going to be able to unlock one of the gates that will lead us to the second level. Now, in this case, for the second level, I'm not going to show me trekking to that because I didn't record that area. Because at this point of the game, I wasn't still sure if I was going to keep this in as a full-on let's play or just still as a test. I have no idea when my transition was and when my sanity decided to leave my body and decided I should play through this whole game. So, first, let's grab this dragonfly that's bouncing around here. And I need to point something out about these dragonflies. They do not look like dragonflies. Sparks looks like a dragonfly because he is a dragonfly. These look like bananas with peas for heads and tiny wings. Hey, it's Shellac. And have stupid names like Shellac. Who names their kid Shellac? I'm sorry, that's just asking to be bullied when you name your child Shellac. And then there was Steffi. I mean, I'd understand Stefan. That makes sense. But Steffi? Come on. Now, one other thing about this area right here that I need to point out, and this area is the entire reason why we will not be getting all of the gems inside of this stage. It is because there are two gems that tend to have the habit of glitching out. So guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Right now, there are two gems that have phased through the floor, and I cannot grab. Those two gems are the entire reason why I can't get all the gems in the stage. Now, I should also mention, don't go after all the gems in this game. You get nothing for doing it. Spyro-san, I'm sorry the dojo is in such a state for your visit. It's usually a haven of tranquility. It is here that dragonflies grow up and train to be dragon companions. Protecting young dragonflies is a dragon sensei's highest calling, you know. And Spyro, your efforts will result in much reward. Yeah, no, they actually won't. You get nothing for 100% in this game besides getting the ending cutscene. That is it. Don't go after the gems in this game. Don't even go after all the dragonflies in this game. In fact, I recommend don't play this game. This is a terrible, terrible game. And honestly, after this, they rebooted the series. And for good reason. Spyro, my kite got stuck up in the tree! 
Could you get my kite out of the tree for me, Spyro? I, I can't reach it because there's nothing here to stand on. Just me. Here is the other reason why we're not going to be completing this stage inside this run. We do not have the appropriate breath in order to be able to, you know, get that kite. Although, at this time, what I was trying to do is I was trying to see if I could fly to it. Because it is possible to get two of the kites. It is possible to get two of them if you are able to time it just right. Unfortunately, we cannot. So, what we have to do is we actually have to come back once we get our next breath ability. Not the lightning, but the ice breath. So, go up over here. And it's in this area to where we have our glitched out gems and this floating box. With a drop shadow that is clearly floating above the air. I already have to deal with this in Sonic Adventure. I don't want to have to deal with it inside Spyro as well. This just makes me want to play a good Spyro game. Maybe I will just do that. Maybe I will do just that. And see, look, there was a 10 gem, but then they're also going to be worth 25 later on. But I cut out most of the loading screens for these ones because let me tell you, the loading screens take forever in a lot of them. I must have forgotten to take this one out. But yes, inside this game, they decided instead of having their own worlds, they decided to put the speedways inside of some of the levels. And that is honestly a change I think is a good idea. I honestly think this is a good idea because I hated having to go to a speedway in its own little portal, which it was just annoying. But because of that, you do not get gems from speedways anymore. No, they're just specifically for dragonflies in this case. So... We have the same as always. We have our time attack and our obligatory race that is for this level, which I cannot tell what this level is trying to do. Is it trying to go with a Chinese motif or a Japanese motif because of how they just seem to intermingle? It's pretty annoying. But just as always, we have ourselves our flying, fly through certain rings, beat up certain amounts of enemies, etc., etc. And we have the return, actually, of a model from Spyro 2. There are rickshaws down there that are being, you know, pulled by the monks that were inside the second Spyro the Dragon game. Of all things, it's just an updated model of the monks. And this leads to a theory I have about this game. Something's telling me that for this game, it was originally going to be a PlayStation 2 title. I do know that... Uh, the fourth Crash Bandicoot game was originally going to be a PlayStation 2 exclusive. I do know that. So something's telling me this game was originally developed for the PlayStation 2. So they pulled a lot of the models from the PlayStation 1 versions of the game and then ended up updating them with the graphics. But that's really it. And one other thing that's very distracting that I'd like to point out is some of the slowdown that ends up happening, but more importantly the little images that happen right there. When we're in the results screen, the images are only going to have two frames, and it looks very choppy because of it. And a criticism I have is, add a third frame in the middle of it to make it seem more natural. Otherwise, as we're going to see, it looks bad. But, there we go. That completes the first of these speedways. With a loading screen. So, Look at that. That is way too fast. They need a third frame in between them to make that look more natural. It especially shows off with the Rip Talk Ninja Flyers because that just looks bad. But there we go. That beats that. And for your reward, you get yourself a dragonfly. Oh, there's plenty stopping us now. Look at this headache. Okay, if Tom Kenny's not going to say that, I'm going to say it. Hey, it's Rashomon! Yeah, that's another thing in this game. I guess they didn't get Tom Kenny to voice every single clip inside this game. So, there's a lot of dragonflies he does not outright voice. But now on to our second one, which are the races. In which you have to fly through all the rings and get in first place. Now, I cut out two failures of this. One of them is because, unfortunately, the game ended I just didn't win the race outright the second one is because the game glitched and said I basically fell in the water when in reality I went through the you know little loops now the races are the same as they were inside of the third Spyro game in which there are the stars in which you can fly through for a speed boost 
and the rockets. Well, there is another glitch in this game. The first time when in any speedway in which you end up going after the race. The first time it loads, it will not load any of the stars that have the rockets inside them at all. I have no idea why this is the case, but you will have to redo the race again in order to be able to get the stars with the rockets. Normally, don't go after them. Just go through the blue stars and you will end up winning. It's an odd glitch that just makes no sense. But now for another complaint, which pretty much is what this entire project is going to be. So if you expected there to be any real positives besides these tiny little amounts that I will give you, then you are dead wrong. I do not like what they did with the models for the characters you're flying against. In previous Spyro games, primarily the third game, all the racers had a different color. They just had the same model, but a different palette. And the thing is, that makes it easy to distinguish if the person you're passing is in sixth place, or if the person you're passing is the first place victor. It makes no sense as to why they're all the same color, and it just leads to confusion. It really does. I do not like that, and I don't get why they didn't just change their colors. Even a lazy palette swap entirely, just paint one of them entirely red. It would have made sense. But either way, we've won, so we've gotten ourselves our next dragonfly. Fun fact, that little text is usually changed the entire time. Hey, that's an actual name, and it's an awesome summon from Final Fantasy X. I should probably get to recording that soon. So, with that, we are actually done with the speedway. So we are completely done. You do not need to come back. There is no hidden mission for Hunter, like there was in Spyro 3 and inside of Spyro 2. So, you're done. And there's that boring loading screen. And guess what? There was actually another loading screen behind that loading screen. So I cut out the longer one. But now to get into another glitch. Oh, yes. I can encounter so many glitches in just the first level. And that's just bad design. You do not have it that you encounter so many in the first level. The glitch is basically if you end up trying to charge the moment you come out of any of the portals that take you to another area inside a level. You have a chance of two things. One, Spyro's model completely freezing in place and sliding along the ground as you're moving. Or two, he will teach stance. Yes, you can get it to where it's repeatable that you can get Spyro to teach stance. That's just abhorrent and bad. Just like this game and this choppy frame rate that is still giving me a headache. Why is the Tylenol not kicked in yet? But we are just about... Uh, I want to say halfway through this level, believe it or not. And we have another dragon over here and a familiar character. Yes, a familiar character that everyone loves. Good old, hello, my dear boy, money bags. I'll get into money bags in a bit, but for right now, let's grab these gems that are around here because as you know, money bags loves gems. And apparently Sparks does not like picking up gems. Yay, dodgy programming. All right, and grab that, and let's free this dragon sensei. You are a dragon wise beyond your years. May the dragon spirits guide you on your way. You mean dragon spirit? There's only one in this entire game, and... Okay, I guess you're not going to open anything for me. Hello, my dear boy! Ah, uh, Spyro. In trouble again, I see. What a surprise. Dragons in danger, or... Something like that? Well, you'll have to pay me 200 gems to cross this mighty large chasm to reach any of the other dojos. Although I may be practicing compassion, money still has my soul. All right, so pay money bags 200 gems? Sure. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Spyro. These gems are music to my ears and will do wonders as inspiration for my poetry. Look, Spyro, even I know some magic when properly motivated. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say it right now. Kiss, money bags, goodbye. 
This is his only appearance in this game. Thanks. Entirely. He only has one appearance. And those 200 gems you just gave him? You're never getting them back. Ever. Every other Spyro game in which you paid money bags, you eventually got your gems back. Spyro 2, uh, Hunter beat him up, and Inspire 3, it was very therapeutic to beat him up yourself. In this game, nope, those 200 gems are completely gone, and you will never get them back the entire game. However, even though you will not get them back the entire game, loading screens will count it that you still have the gems. All 7,000 of them. When in reality, your total count at the end of this game is going to be 6,800. Again, do not get the gems in this game. They are completely useless. They will not get you anything, and you will not get some super bonus world for getting them all. Instead, you'll just be aggravating yourself when you're trying to find them and get 100% completion like I did. Why did I do this? Good work, Spyro-san. Those rip talks don't seem to be much of a challenge for you. Perhaps you should contemplate a career as a dragon sensei. It could be your density. I mean, your destiny. Now, I will open that gate. That, it appears, is my density. I mean, destiny, Spyro. That was terrible. I mean, just terrible. Please, Toshiro, just go away. Your destiny is complete. Now just implode. Uh, I'm sorry. That was a terrible joke. And they just kept going with it. Why? Why? And why am I catching basically what is the equivalent of a banana? An unripened banana with little wings. Hey, it's gone. Hey, it's an actual name. And hey, look, the game was trying to go for 60 frames per second there for a second. Uh, it, it's, al it's always interesting when a game decides, hey, I want to try going 60 frames per second. It's sort of the same thing I have whenever I would play Sonic Genesis on the Game Boy Advance and would say, hey, look, the game's trying to actually have a consistent frame rate. Oh, there it goes again. Back to shit. So, over here we have another one of the dragons that we can't really do anything with because we don't have the ice breath. And... Honestly, I don't mind coming back to stages to backtrack for things that I don't have yet. One thing I find odd, though, is the fact that this is the only level in the game that does this. This is literally the only level in this entire game that will force you to backtrack. And that seems honestly like a waste of time. And since I knew I was going to have to backtrack, I ended up skipping another one of the portals inside the game. So we're going to be coming back once we get the ice breath. So no worries. But for right now, we need to keep going forward because, I mean, that, that dragon's density was to open that door. I mean, destiny. God, that was so terrible. And thanks, Sparks. You're just the pinnacle of, you know, being helpful. Now, one thing that I find odd is I'm surprised they didn't give you a tutorial for the camera in this game. Normally, they give you a tutorial for the camera inside this game from Zoe the Fairy. And why does it look like that dragonfly has no wings? So it literally is just a flying banana with a pea for a head. All right, get over here. Hey, it's Cinder. Bye, Cinder. Uh, honestly, there is no payoff for this at all. And one thing that is a huge plot hole that I like to point out, again, is the fact that, you know, a lot of the people inside this game will make it a deal, especially inside the Dragonfly Dojo, that dragonflies and dragons are, like, harmonious, one and the same, then why is it that in every single video game that has had dragons that we have seen, the only one who has ever had a dragonfly is Spyro. They're trying to make it seem like it's this big, huge thing, but it's not. It's just them pulling it out of their ass, which is why, honestly, after this they sort of tried a quasi-reboot, which did not work too well. And then they did a full-on reboot with the Legend of Spyro series. A series I've been meaning to try out, but I've I've never really tried out. I'm probably going to try it out with Link's Paradox in the future. But, let's grab more gems. And unfortunately cry myself to sleep, because it was later on at this point in which I realized, you know, two gems glitched through the floor. And since I don't have the ability to detect where gems are yet, I have to leave this level and come back later. So, let's... Get this dragonfly right here. Where'd you go? There you are. Over here. Come on. 
Get over here. Hey, it's cloudy. Is it with a chance of meatballs? Because I'm starving, and I think my pizza's almost done. Alright, so now let us climb up here and free the last of the dragon senseis that are inside the game. And in fact, actually, these are going to be the last of the dragons we're going to be seeing this entire game. Yeah, we're actually not going to be really seeing dragons anymore. And I'd like to also point out a correction. I was wrong. Hunter is not completely gone from this game yet. We're going to see him two more times. But he's pretty much gone from the overworld entirely. All right. Kill this Riptok. Kill this Riptok. And there we go. Free the last dragon, Sensei. You have done well, little dragon. Freeing the dragon senseis took much courage. I think this baby dragonfly will be safe with you. Wait, so you had a baby dragonfly frozen with you? Hey, it's Roxy. How is that? Oh, that's why it's blue. It's frostbitten. Remember, Spiral. Find and return the remaining baby dragonflies. They are the fortune of the dragon realms. How are they the fortune of the dragon realms? Is it the fact that they don't look like dragonflies at all and look like actual freakish mutants? Because honestly, that's all I can get from that. They're really big freakish mutants. Now, here's a kite that you can actually end up getting right now. If you end up landing in the tree, you will actually end up lowering the kite right now. But since you can't get them all, you can't get the other dragonflies. So it's kind of pointless. But grab this gem, grab this gem, and... Right, there's one right there. Sweet! All right, so now that we're done with that, let's go flying back and get some of the last of the gems before we end up leaving this level for good and then turning in our new dragon rune to get lightning breath. Which actually does have a property that you actually can use on the overworld. So I will give it credit there. The breaths actually do do something in this game. It's just executed so poorly that you kind of wish that they would have given more time. I know I do. I know I also wish I had more Tylenol. I cannot stress enough for the headache. It hurts. But there's our exit portal for this world. Every single world will have one. But just as always, there is also a way that connects the entire place together. So if you come down here, we will end up back at the beginning of the level. Right here. So there we go. And it was at this point I realized, okay, I need to check my atlas and see how many gems I have. Well, I have that much, but it looks like for the Dragonfly Dojo, I'm missing two gems that are glitched in the floor. I ended up spending some time trying to find them, and that's when I ended up just giving up. So, instead, we're going to fly and get out of this level. I don't want you guys, you know, to take the time and wonder where the gems are, so let's just leave. So there we go. That takes care of the Dragonfly Dojo for right now. We'll be coming back later on in order to get ourselves the last of the gems and the other two dragonflies that are available to us. But, now comes the fun part. After this, we're going to be going to the second level of the game, which has a lot longer of a time for this. I'm probably going to split into two parts. And really shows how bad the level design is in this game. Loading, loading, why have a loading screen to go into another loading screen? Maybe this game isn't optimized correctly, and you would be entirely right. Tyro, the magic of his sacred room will grant you the power of electric breath. But, there we go. So, anyway guys, I'm gonna end it off right here. This is Maroxas1359. Next time, we're gonna head off to a new area inside the overworld. See you guys next time. <laughs>